Okay, yes, as you said, I'm going to talk about Backpad, which is a scalable tool to check PGP configuration. Now, since we at UXA here, I don't expect you to understand Backpad, uh, the Border Gateway Protocol. So let me explain by an example. So, you know, before I came here, I wanted to prepare myself a bit about Amsterdam. And so what I did is I went on the iAmsterdam website and kind of magically this website then appeared in my browser. But how does this actually work? So to understand this, we first have to understand that the internet isn't just one big network, but instead it's made up of smaller independent networks that are run by internet service providers or ISPs. So for example, me here in this bubble over here, I'm connected to an ISP in Seattle like Comcast, but there are other ISPs like universities or corporations. Now, talking to my own ISP and forwarding packets within the ISP is fairly simple because the ISP has control over all its hardware and all its router and so on. What's more complicated is for these ISPs to talk with one another. And this is what the Border Gateway Protocol is for. So ISPs use BGP to transfer routing information with one another. For example, this ISP that I'm connected to here forwards routing information to its neighbor, telling this neighbor about me and how to reach me. And this ISP then forwards that information to other ISPs which forward it and so on until everything, uh, until every ISP on the internet knows about me. And now given this routing information, the iAmsterdam website can transfer its packets over this ISP, then over the Atlantic, then to this ISP in Seattle, and finally to me, and the website appears in my browser. Great. So what makes BGP different from other routing protocols is that internet service providers can configure um, custom policies in their BGP configurations. So for example, an internet service provider might implement, an impl uh, might implement a policy that blocks routing information to one of its competitors. What makes this hard though, is that these routing, inf uh, that these policies need to be implemented in low level languages, which are distributed, or these programs written in these languages are distributed across multiple routers and so if you want to reason about the correctness, you actually have to reason about this distributed system. And there's very little static analysis tools that can help you with this. And so this has led to very highly visible errors. For example, the United States forwarded much of its like uh, military traffic through China Telecom. This was actually covered by a congressional report or YouTube was down for two hours because of a misconfiguration in a ISP in Pakistan. So you see that even like very small errors in very small ISPs somewhere in the world can like take down a big player like Google. So to help internet service providers with this, with this problem, we developed a tool called Backpipe. And Backpipe takes two inputs. First, it takes a specification of these policies that ISPs want to enforce. And then it also takes the configuration that we want to check. And the output of the tool is then either that the specification holds or that there's a counter example where the configuration does not correctly implement the specification. Great. So now we understand enough for an overview of the rest of this talk. First, I'm going to give a little more background on Backpipe. And then second, I'm going ta to talk about this BGP specification language that we've developed. Thirdly, I'm going to talk about how we were able to verify these specifications on real configurations with hundreds of thousands of lines of code. And finally, I'm going to show an evaluation on config. Okay, so some more background. So to understand this, spe uh, this BGP specification language, we have to zoom into one of the AS's because it's one AS and it's administrators that want to implement a certain policy. So each AS consists of, so the, uh, the ISP here is um, represented by this cloud and the ISP consists of various routers. These are these circles here. And each router 
contains a routing table. This routing table stores all the routing information that it has received so far. For example, it stores this route that um, tells it how to forward packets to me in Seattle. So whenever BGP, a BGP router receives a new um, route announcement, what happens is that the router first calls an import filter on this announcement. And this is where the um, configurability of BGP comes in. ISP administrators can basically write arbitrary functions in these um, import filters, which take the received announcement and then either modify the announcement or drop it. In this case, it has been modified, which is indicated by the different color. And this modified announcement is then stored in the routing table. Once stored in the routing table, we also export the announcement to all of our neighbors. And again, this export filter can either modify the announcement or it can drop the announcement, indicated by the little X here. And this, con uh, and this process now continues over and over again. Every router that is in some ISP on the internet will ex import announcements that it receives, install them in the routing table, and then export them. Now the final thing that I want to explain is what happens when BGP receives multiple announcements for the same route, uh, for the same destination. So there's two routes to lead to me somewhere in Seattle. So what happens is that BGP takes both announcements and runs a fairly complicated process to select one of them, which it believes to be better. In this case, it believes yellow to be better and then replaces the previous announcement, the blue one, with the yellow one. Okay, now let's talk about the specification language. So what we can do with our specification language or what internet service providers can do with the specification language is they can write a full functional specification for their import and export filters. So what this means is they provide this import question mark function, that's the specification, which takes an input output pair for the import filter and then returns a Boolean indicating whether this is a valid input output or not. So for this import to be valid, the import question mark specification must return true on the red and blue input. And these specifications are fairly expressive. For example, we can write that if the destination of an announcement that we received is localhost, then we should not import this announcement. So the uh, result of the import filter should be dropping. And this makes sense because we can't route any announce, uh, we can't route for localhost on the internet. Now, if the destination is not localhost, the specification just says true, which means the um, import filter is free to do whatever it wants to do. Great. Now, exports filter work almost exactly the same. There also um, there's also an export specification that takes an input-output pair and returns a Boolean. Formally, we can say what it means for these specifications to hold. The specification hold when for all traces of the network, for every received announcement, the import specification applied to the received announcement and the imported announcement returns true. And for all selected announcements in our routing table, the export specification applied to that announcement and the exported spe uh, announcement returns true. Cool. So far we understand import and export specification. What remains are selection specifications. And how they work is that whenever we receive multiple announcements and one of them is selected, it must be the case that the, um, the selected one is greater than all the other ones. So the user, basically the specification that the user provides is a ranking among announcements and then the selected announce for this uh, specification to be true, the selected announcement must be greater than all other received announcements. And this can, for example, be used to specify that announcements with higher revenue should be preferred over announcements that generate less revenue. And again, what this means formally to be true is that for every trace of the network, 
the selected announcement must be greater than any of the received announcements. Okay, in summary, there's three specifications, import, export, and a selection specification. And this means, uh, this formula says what it means for them to be true. Okay, great. Now that we understand the specifications, we have to check them. So what Bagpipe has to do is it has to check this formula here. And let's actually try to see how easy it is to do that. So we want to check it for all traces. So to begin with, let's just consider one particular trace and see how we can check it. So the trace that we're considering here forwards the red announcement and the green announcement and the blue announcement all concurrently throughout the network. Now once we have this one trace, we have to check this formula here. And this is now actually easy. We just look at all the imported and exported and selected announcements and check that these specifications all return true. However, what's complicated about this is that while we can easily check it for one particular trace, there are infinitely many traces. To understand this, just consider that after the red, green, and blue announcement, there might be a purple one or a other color, gray, <laughs> and that may be withdrawn and another one may be sent. So there's infinitely many of these. So the solution to this is what we dubbed the initial network reduction. And what this says is basically that instead of checking all traces, we only check traces that forward exactly one announcement through the empty network where nothing else has been forwarded before. So instead of the previous trace where everything is forwarded all at once, what we would do is we first check the trace where we only forward red, and then we check this formula. Then we consider the trace where we forward green in the empty network, and then we check the formula. And then we just consider the trace where we forward blue, and then we check the formula. So this is great, because now the set of all traces is finite, because there's only a finite number of paths that announcements can take through the network, and the number of announcements are also bounded by the specification, which gives like a limit on the size of announcements. However, there's a problem with this approach, and that's that BGP is stateful. So there's, no act there's actually no reason to believe that this should be true. Right? If I only check the announcements forwarded in the initial announcement, Maybe I don't capture them all. Maybe some announcements will only be forwarded if something else has been forwarded before. And there's two cases where this could happen, where BGP is stateful. And I'm gonna show that these are actually not a problem and that the initial network reduction is sound. So one of the things that where BGP is stateful is selection. And this is obvious, right? Whenever we select an announcement, the selection depends on the announcement that we have received before. However, the cool thing is that um, this can never lead to more announcements being selected because whenever, there are no, whenever we are for, uh, selecting an announcement in the empty network, there's no competing announcements. And so we will always select the announcement in the empty network. So nicely, um, this kind of statefulness in BGP is no problem. Now the second thing where BGP is stateful is on the export of announcements. So whenever a router imports and then exports an announcement and then exports exactly the same announcement right afterwards, BGP actually won't send the second announcement. And this makes sense. This is there to save data, right? It doesn't make sense to send a duplicate packet again. But again, this statefulness doesn't interfere with the initial network reduction because in the empty network, we always forward an announcement because there wasn't an announcement before that could block it. So to summarize, and this is the cool insight here, is that BGP has maximal forwarding behavior in the initial network. So any announcement that will be forwarded in any, you know, via any trace of the network will also be forwarded in the empty network. Okay, great. Now that we had this insight, we can actually implement it in our tool. So what we do is instead of checking this infinite set of traces, we replace it with the set of initial traces, 
And this is now a finite search, which is at least somewhat feasible. However, the state is still very, very large. So we can't just brute force search it. So what we do is we first partition the space into various smaller spaces by the paths that announcements take through the network. And this is nice because every one of these partitions we can now solve on a different class uh, of a different node in a cluster. And the second thing we do is we do symbolic execution using an SMT solver. So for every path, we symbolically check whether these specifications hold for a symbolic announcement. And there's more tricks that we have to play to make this work, and they're all described in the paper. Great. So now we have a tool that actually is supposed to work. So we wanted to actually try it on real configuration. So what we did is we expressed various specifications, 10 of which came from um, the Truniper configuration scenario. And we evaluated them on real configurations with hundreds of thousands of lines of code. And in the end, we found 14 policies that hold. So we have verified that indeed these are always true. And we found 19 policy violations where the specification did not hold. And note that we did not find any, or di we did not report any false positives. Great. So let me dig deeper into a little bit of the evaluation. For all the details, again, refer to the paper. So what we did is we evaluated our tool on Internet2, which is a nationwide internet service provider that connects universities throughout the US. And we tested Internet 2 with various specifications. One of them is the no Martian specification. What it says is what I said before with the localhost. It basically says whenever you receive an announcement for a bogus um, destination, then you are not allowed to install it in your routing table. And we verified this, and it turned out to actually hold. And it took back by 20 minutes to verify it. Next we check the block to external specification. The specification says that certain announcements which are tagged with a private tag should not be forwarded to any neighbor of the ISP. And so we checked this. It took Bagpipe eight hours, and we fo found five leaks where this is actually not the case. Last but not least, we check the GAURX search specification. This specification roughly says that Internet 2 should always choose an announcement that generates the highest revenue. And again, this generated 14 problems, and it took two, three days to verify. Now, BGP is you know, a big problem that um, leads to many errors and is used by everyone on the Internet. So there has been a lot of related work. For example, there has been propane, which is a high-level language to configure BGP routers. And this language is then compiled into these lower level languages that are actually installed on the router. There's also Batfitch, which similar to our tool, verifies BGP configurations, but it only does so for a given set of traces instead of all possible traces. There's also Netcat, which similar to Propane, is a high level configuration language for software defined networks which are then compiled into the actual configurations for the routers. And there's header space analysis, which did a similar analysis to ours, but it did it for packets, not for the routing information that's forwarded over the internet. So in summary, the contributions of this paper are the following. First, we developed a specification language. And I think the key takeaway here is that we treated BGP router configuration as programs running in a distributed system. And this way we could apply network uh, TL techniques like full functional specifications to reason about them. Second, we were able to scale the verification of these expressive specifications to hundreds of thousands of lines of code. And the key insights here were the initial red network reduction and then using symbolic execution and parallelization. I also want to note that 
networking is a really nice domain for this, um, for this sort of analysis. Because the programs running on these routers are usually long, but not very complex. They, for example, don't contain any loops. Lastly, we evaluated on real configurations and we both verified the correctness of specifications, so the absence of any bugs, and we found bugs. Thank you very much. <laughs>